much what, what God did in my life back then, as you were talking earlier about me when I walked away from the number one song, you know, you know, God will require us to step out of our comfort zone, you know? Um, like I said, I, I didn't have a clue what was going to happen to me because I was just so used to living a certain lifestyle and, um, knowing that once I made that decision to walk away from the R&B industry, I didn't, you know, I really didn't know what what was going to happen. You know, I just simply had to trust God, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, God pro pro proven to me throughout the 29, 28 years that he is my Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides, you know? And um, so following God sometimes is, is there going to be seasons in your life when you, you can't trace the hand of God, but you have to trace the heart of God. Hey man, that's good, Stacey. That's good. Welcome to Vision for Change Radio with John Stevenson. When faith meets information, everything is possible. It takes just one moment to put your life on the road to success and personal fulfillment. You can obtain God's best when you can see your future in your present. Listen in as we share information that will inspire your spirit and empower your soul. Good evening, everybody. (laughs) Good evening, everybody. Amen and amen. How you guys doing? Y'all know I'm John Stevenson. And Stacey, as I said, well, who's off? I said, I'm going to pray first and all that good stuff. And then we get going. I'm still going to pray anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. And we go praise anyway also. Father, we do thank you for this opportunity yeah. to glorify yeah. your name. Yes, Father, Lord. We are here. And we thank you for whatever we talk about, Father. Yes, we get the glory. And yes. we say that the people that are hearing this, Father, yes, it be edified. Be yes, Lord. They will be inspired. Fired yes, Lord. What we'll bring forth. So, Father, we glorify you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in this time in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Well, you all, I have a wonderful woman of God, and she really needs no introduction. And I'm not real great at introductions. <laughs> so, this <laughs> woman is a good friend of mine, man. And, she, and um, I'm telling you, just a wonderful, peaceful, loving, great woman. She is a, a legend in R&B. And this is my friend, Stacey Lattisaw Jackson. Hey, Stacey. God bless you, my friend. And <laughs> <laughs> it's always I'm a so pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're here to talk to me too. Okay. And I want to tell you guys, we have tried our best to get this thing to work. So again, yeah, but, it's all to you all. <laughs> so, but we're here. All right, well, um, yeah. for those who don't know, Stacy is um, just, again, I, in my prayer, you guys, I, I said some things, but I know God's going to do some things tonight. And I knew when we had this conversation, Stacy, that uh, things that will be said, people will be edified and built up by what we're talking about. So um, we're just going to talk about you and your life and, and we're just going to talk and you feel free to share as the Holy Ghost leads you to share, okay? Absolutely. Amen. Well, you all, Stacy, for those who don't know, Stacy has a wonderful long career in um, R&B and um, just great. I'll tell you, as a little boy, I, I fell in love with you at first when you came out and I said, oh my God, they said she's from D.C. And um, man, you good, see somebody that, because we're in the same age bracket, you know, so when you see mm-hmm. anybody singing your age bracket, you feel like, all right, you know, because... <laughs> So Stacey, tell us a little bit about how you got started singing. You know, most of us know that you got started at a very, very young age. Mm -hmm. Um, Just talk about just a little bit how you got started in the music business. Well, actually, my, uh, wow, as a little girl, I began singing at the age of six years old with my mom, um, whom I love dearly. My mother, we were born and raised in Southeast D.C., and um, she used to sing with Marvin Gaye. Uh, she was actually the lead singer at the time in his group, and um, her name was Sandra Storm. Mm-hmm. So my mom had a beautiful voice, and um, so I used to kind of mimic her whenever I heard her singing around the house. I would kind of, you know, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I would, I would kind of, you know, whatever she sang, I'd sing right behind her, and um, she would be like, "Wow." you can do that. So yeah. So next thing I knew I was uh, nine years old 
and um, singing even more. And um, they used to, um, actually my sister, I'm sorry. My sister, they, she was having a, they were having a talent show at her school. And um, she asked me if I would sing a few songs and I said, no, I'm okay with singing at home, but I don't want to sing on, on a stage in front of people. Mm -hmm. um, so my mom said that she would give me a few dollars. I think it, at the time she was like, I'll give you $10 if you sing a couple of songs. And they somewhat bribed me because I was thinking about all the toys I can get with $10. You know, back in the day, we had this store um super giant is that was I, what I, I remember super giant super giant yes indeed uh -huh. i think it was Lana maryland if i'm not mistaken so yeah i sang at her talent show and um after that the phone calls just began to flood and and we got all types of invitations to sing at um talent shows fashion shows and all kinds of events in the dmv area and so that was the beginning of my career at nine years old. Um, never really something that I wanted to do, but it just kind of unfolded that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they would always record me singing at the different uh, events. And um, so my favorite aunt, who's now with the Lord, um, she heard, let me see, make sure I get this correct. Her boss worked with, the attorney, one of the attorneys over at Atlantic Records in New York City. Mm -hmm. So she said to him, she says, I really want you to hear my niece. She can really sing. So yeah, she um, got the cassette tape to Mr. Jaffe and Mr. Jaffe, that was the attorney's name. Mr. Jaffe sent the tape to Henry and played it for him. him. Henry Allen at the time was the um what was his position i'm sorry he was the um i guess you would call him not the what is it what's the title there manager um whatever he, he had a big position at um mm -hmm. atlantic team records so henry was kind of surprised at my voice because like i said i was only 12 years old at the time so he asked us to come to new york and to sing he wanted me to sing you know in person for him and and so we drove up to new york i'm sorry he was the president yeah president of the label yeah so we drove over up to new york and um i sang what song did i do at the time you light up my life by debbie boom oh my and, goodness i remember that i used to love that yeah, song yeah still one of my favorite songs today mm -hmm. i i love old school school music mm -hmm. to me that's that that's where you know it's, it's like music has changed so much, but you know, it's, it, it was more about love. Everything was centered around love and staying together, you know? Absolutely, it sure was. And, um, music is, is not the same anymore, but anyway, we'll get to that later. So <laughs> yeah, so I, I sang that song for Henry Allen and I'll never forget, um, he began to cry. And um, I'm sitting, he, he was smoking a cigar and uh, tears was rolling down his eyes. And I was like, why is this man crying? You know, and I just began, I just, you know, kept on singing the song. And um, at the end of the song, he kind of sat there for a minute. It's quiet. And um, I was signed on the spot. Wow. To, on to Atlantic Records. And I went on to record six albums over at Atlantic. Mm -hmm. And um, then once that contract was up, I signed to Motown Records oh, and wow. uh, recorded four albums on Motown. And um, it, it was, those were interesting times for me because like I said before, it was something that my mom wanted to do. You right. know, I think that she, I felt like she wanted to live her dream through me uh -huh. uh, because she always wanted to be a professional singer, but her career, you know, after she had us, um, she was a stay-at-home mom and she just kind of devoted her time to, you know, taking care of us. So, yeah, it was nothing that I really wanted to do, but it's almost like God just, you know, it was what God God wanted me to do at the time. And, and I never asked for the platform, you know, which was so odd to me. But I, I have had moments where I have often thought about, you know, why did God give you that platform? 
you know, right. mm -hmm. but I'm grateful for it today because I use the platform that I have now to minister to other people, to help mm -hmm. other people. You know, I love to encourage and inspire people. Um, I, I talk a lot about purpose, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I just love to help people because I know that, like I said, um, the things that I went through really, I, I believe, molded me into who I am today, you mm -hmm. know, and although I went through the depression, I went through um, a season in my life where I really was very, you know, just very unhappy and not knowing my purpose, you know, mm -hmm. um, God kept me in and through that time. Um, thank God I never, you know, uh, got into drugs and the alcohol and things of that nature during that time because it was always around me in the right. music industry, you know, it was everywhere I went. I'll never forget one time when we had gotten off the plane in Jamaica and I think it was 13 or 14 then. And um, as soon as we got off the plane, like I said, you know, they came up to us, what, what kind of drug you want? You know, with this, this, and it was just crazy, crazy times like that where the drugs were always around, but I had a good foundation Mm -hmm. Meaning my mom was always there. She traveled with me, um, never went anywhere alone. Mm -hmm. um, and that I think that's what kept me, you know, and of course, you know, even as a little girl, I was raised in the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. So I knew of God, you know, and um, therefore I knew enough to pray even at 13 to 14, I prayed. I'll never forget those times, you know, they, they weren't easy times for me. Because of, uh, like I said, dealing with that depression, it was just, those were rough times for me. I mean, I, I was just so unhappy for so long. And you would think that, you know, um, having the money and the platform and traveling the world and, and meeting lots of celebrities. And, you know, even at 14, I had the opportunity to open for the Jacksons, uh, mm -hmm. the Triumph Tour. And uh, that was actually the highlight of my career. Uh -huh. um, meeting Michael and being able to um, go backstage behind, you know, just to see him every, every night. We traveled for 13 weeks and we went to 36 different cities. Wow. And oh my wow. God, did that take a toll on us? Me and my mom, we were on the road and it was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, when, when are we ever going to go home? But it, <laughs> it was, it was a tremendous opportunity for me because um, I got to meet his mom, his father. Janet uh -huh. and, and the rest of the brothers, but Michael was so humble. Mm -hmm. He was so kind. He was very generous and he was not the monster that many people portrayed him to be, you know? And it's so unfortunate that in many cases, when you reach a certain level of success, mm -hmm. people start to, you know, kind of, I don't know, jealousy is a terrible thing, but you know, it, it comes with a price you know, mm -hmm. having that type of um, stardom and fame, you know, but Michael was, I just believe that because of his childhood, you know, not being normal, mm -hmm. um, he just loved being around children. And I can totally relate to that because I didn't have a normal childhood. You know, I, I had come out of school at what, 13, I was homeschooled, uh -huh. never went to my high school prom, never even went to, you know, the high school games and things. So, uh, I, I felt like I missed that time in my life because I was always on the road. I was always away from my family, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it was quite, it was quite hard for me, honestly, you know, there was a time, and I don't tell a lot of people this, but there was a time when I, I saw a therapist because, you know, when you talk about mental health, a lot of people don't really you know, want to discuss it, but it's real and it should be talked about. It should be discussed because yeah. it's, it's depression is a terrible thing. Well, you know, it's, back then, I would think that was almost be like taboo back then. Now it's more accepted that we can go find a therapist. But, exactly. you know, back then when we grew up, it was like, okay, if you were seeing a therapist, they thought, okay, you're crazy. Something's wrong. They didn't see it as helping you, you know? And so, and then part of this, Stacey, you know, this was your job, you know, and. Oh my God, it was. <laughs> it was my job from the time I was 12 and up until the time I, I retired from the industry at 25, 24, 25. And um, 
yeah, that was my livelihood. You know, mm. I, I was able to buy nice things. I never had to look at a price tag, but I was still empty inside. I was mm. still unhappy. I was still depressed, you know? Mm. So I tell people all the time, you can have nice things, but still be, you know, have this void on the inside of you that only God can feel, in my opinion. I believe that if we were all created with a hole in us, that only God could feel that yeah. void. Stuff can't do it, you know? Right. People right. can't do it. Places can't do it. Mm. I, I'm a witness to that. I know what it's like to be depressed. Um, I know what it's like to not even want the sun to shine through your windows. You just, it's, it's like a dark cloud that just constantly follows you, you know? And that's why I'm, I'm just so um, compassionate for people that, you know, are suffering with it. And I want to, I want to pray for people tonight. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We can, we can do that. You know, Stacey, when people see things from the outside, it does look okay. Because all they see is, the money, the glitz, you traveling, it looks fun, yep. but mm -hmm. nobody knows what goes into making that happen and how to make that happen. And being at a young age, everybody is pushing you, I'm sure. There's times when you wanted to go play and hang it's out and, relax, and they push, 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 push because they knew that the money, they, they wanted the money to come in. Right. You know? It's a lot of pressure. You know, I'll never forget. My mother is saying that, you know, it was taking a toll on both of us because I, we were actually coming from, it was, we, we did a show somewhere. I think it was with, um, oh gosh, we, we did so many different shows, but, but um, back then, Charlie Wilson's group, he was in a group. The what was Gap Band. The Gap, Gap Band, yeah. Yep, we, had done, we had done some shows with them and uh, we had just gotten off the plane and we got a phone call from Henry Allen, like I said, who was the president of the label, told us that I had to go to um, Germany to perform over there. Mm -hmm. And both my mom and I cried sitting in the airport because we were just exhausted, you know? So those were times when we just, we just, we were just constantly on the road, you know? People, like you said, they only see one side of it, mm -hmm. you know, but I paid a heck of a price. Mm -hmm. I paid a heck of a price. Now I'm going to say this. Here's what the bold thing. Having a number one record and walking away. What's and that? that, that you have way. to know. You have to know that's God. Because Ooh. they come to you and say, hey, you're number one. Hey, I'm walking away. <laughs> Let, me yes. tell you. Let me tell you something. It took a lot of guts. Mm -hmm. Okay. You talk about stepping out of your comfort zone and to the unknown. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I had to do mm -hmm. because I was so used to living a certain type of lifestyle mm -hmm. where I never had to look at a price tag. Mm -hmm. Whatever I wanted, I went and bought it. Mm -hmm. And I knew at that point, I'll never forget because I come to the end of myself, meaning I was tired of being tired. I was tired of being unhappy. I had low self-esteem and um, just empty. And, and, and that particular night, I'll never forget, I dropped to the floor and I said, God, I need to know who you are and I need to know what your purpose is for me. And I felt a presence come over me that I, I, I had never felt before in my life. And what I tapped into that night, I wanted more of. I wanted more of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I just began to pray more and I began to read my word. I, I, Kevin can tell you, I read the word of God so much where I, I didn't even want to leave my home because I, I felt so much peace in reading the word and praying. And yeah, hey, um, you mentioned Kevin. I know Kev, who Kevin is. Who, who is Kevin? So everybody. Kevin's my husband. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so who's Kevin? <laughs> so that's her husband, everybody. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I tapped into, you know, that um, peace that I had been looking for. Mm -hmm. And um, the depression left. Mm -hmm. and, and I tell people all the time that when you know, when you get to know God, when you get to know who he is and what his plans are for you, then your life begins to change. You, you, you're just not the same anymore. Mm -hmm. And I had an encounter with God that night. And that's when, like I said, I just became fully committed to serving him. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a difference between knowing him and knowing, the, knowing him and just knowing his word. Because many people just know God's name, 
Right. But you get you got to get to know the character of God. And, mm-hmm. and that happens when we read the word of God and spend time in his presence. Amen. Hey, hey Stacey, pray right now. You know, we told you, I was going to pray at the end, but you know what? We're in this moment and you said you wanted to pray for people going through that. Mm-hmm. You want to pray right now? Amen. 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 Dearest Lord God, hallelujah. We come into your presence tonight, Father, as humble as we know how. Thank you, dear Lord, because of who you are. There is no one like you. You are great and mighty. You are a wonderful savior. That's why we love you. That's why we honor you. And that's why we praise you. God, you are omnipotent. You are all knowing and all seeing. You are holy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There is no one like you. You are king of kings and you are Lord of lords. Father, if there's anyone right now that is watching this interview that is dealing with depression or low self-esteem or may even have thoughts of suicide, I ask you right now, Father, by the power of your spirit, God, that you will touch them, God, even now. Even now, God, lift every weight. Lift every burden, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even now, God, I pray, Father, by the power of your spirit, wherever you may be right now, lift up your hands. I feel the presence of God so strong. Even now, Father, I thank you. Even now, God, lift up your hands for that one that is dealing with depression. Even now, even now, even now, lift up your hands. Don't be ashamed because God loves you and God wants to set you free. Even now. Father, I pray, Father, you, you are no respect of persons, Father, because what you do for one, you do for the other. Yes, Just as you set me free from depression, Father, I ask you right now, Father, by the power of your spirit, God, that you would lift the spirit of depression in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Thank Nazareth. You, Father. Yes, Father, and may there be testimonies tonight, Father. May there be testimony, people that will come forth and say how God set them free. Oh, God, let your glory be revealed. Even now, God, move by your spirit, God. Thank you, Jesus. God, I give you glory. God, I give you honor because you are holy. And it's not your will that your people be depressed. Even now, even now, God, move by your spirit. God, do what only you can do. Do what only you can do, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. And for that one, Lord God, that's seeking you right now for healing, I pray, Father, by the power of your spirit, that you would heal even now. That you would heal every broken heart. Even now, God, even now, Father, even now, God, do it, God. You know what your people stand in need of. You are the God that works wonders and miracles. There is nothing too hard for you, God. You hold all power in your hands, God. You're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think. Oh, God, you know what your people stand in need of tonight. Father, this interview is not about me. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we in, we invite you now, Father. Have your way, God. Move us out of the way, God. Even now, do it, God. Do what only you can do, God. Set the captives free tonight, Father. Even now, God. Even now, God. Move by your spirit, Lord, I pray. I beseech you, Father, by the mercies of God, Lord. Even now, God, even now, God, draw your people back to you for that one that's backsliding, God, even now. Draw them back to you, God, even now, God. Even now, God, turn their hearts back to you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Even now, God. Even now, God, move mightily. Move mightily, you, Lord. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Mm. Father, we worship you. We worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. We worship you, Father, in the beauty of holiness because you are holy. Mm. You are holy. 
you are holy. And Father, for that, that one that's looking for a job, for that one that's standing in need, oh God, whether it be a financial need, Father, I pray for now that you would meet that need because your word says that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Meet the needs of your people tonight, Father. Where, whatever it may be, you are Jehovah Jireh. Mm. You are you, our Lord. provider. Thank yes, you, you are. Father, you I are thank you. I'm going, to, I'm going to also yes. add to this, Stacey. Father, I thank you, Father, yes. that you give them encounters with you. Even now, God. Father, that, Father, they'll, they'll see a real you, Father, not religion. Even now. Father, they'll experience Even now. your presence, who you Even really now. are right now, Father. Even now. So, Father, send laborers in their path. Even now. Father, you'll connect them to the right people, the right yes, people that can be them Father. spiritually, Father. Yes, Father. And we receive that, Lord. Yes, Father. We receive that. Yes, Father. Do a great work tonight, Father. Do a great work tonight, Father. Thank you. Woo! We yield. We yield, we yield, we yield. And we move ourselves out of the way, God, that you will be glorified and lifted up tonight. Thank you. Have your way, sweet Holy Spirit. Come and do what you want to do. Mm. And we shall be so careful to give thy name the praise, the honor, and all of the glory. We want to see people's lives change tonight, Father. Thank you. And only you can do it. Only you can do it, Father. Oh, Thank glory you. to your name, most high God. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See now, folks, you, you you probably thought you were going to come and just get in, in just an interview, but God, you're having an experience and an encounter with God. That was my prayer. And I do know, I do know that God loves you and, and you should yeah, know that. Yeah. Yes, he does. And, and sometimes we'll get in these places where we'll get we'll get as this inner focus and we'll miss yeah. the love that's around us. So if you are the person that's dealing with some of these things that we just prayed. Thank Listen, you, Jesus. Just, you can you can hit us up. We'll, we'll minister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't Amen. have to close your stuff out here probably good. Inbox Amen. me, message me, and then we'll get with you. We'll talk with you. We'll love on you, and we'll help you. Um, and no, and no. You know what? Let me tell you this, Father. We take also take authority over the devil. Any demonic activity in there, now, the name any of Jesus influence right now. We take. Authority over that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Command that spirit of depression to go. Even now, in the name of Jesus. Father, you said whatever we bind on earth. Yes, my Lord. In heaven, whatever we yes, loose on earth is loose. Yes, my earth. Lord. So we loose the spirit of peace. Yes, even now, God. Spirit of love. Yes, my Lord. Tranquility. Yes, my Lord. And Father, open the eyes of their understanding. Yes, my dear Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel a need to pray for pastors tonight. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Father, even now, I ask you, dear Lord, that you will look upon your, your pastors and your leaders and your bishops and evangelists and apostles, God, even now, God. That even now, Father, that you would endow them even now with the supernatural power on high. Oh, God, it's not easy being um, called. Your, your word says many are called, but few are chosen. It's not easy to, to, um, to, to minister during these days and times. And I pray even now, Father, that you would equip your, 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 your leaders with everything that they need, Father, even now. Even now. Let there be a greater glory in their lives. May they be hungry for more of you hungry for more of you, depositing them what they need, God, in this season right now, in this hour right now, Father. Give them what they need, Father, even now. Refuel their spiritual tanks, Father. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Even now, God, touch them, God, with deuterous power from the top of their head, Lord, to the soles of their feet, God. May they experience you even now the more. 
even now. Give them a hunger and thirst for righteousness, Father, that they will be bold in you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, give them a holy boldness, Father, to speak your word with a boldness, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, use them mightily, God. Let them not be fearful. Let them not be afraid, but stand for righteousness and holiness because you are a holy God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. God, I give you glory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Do it for your glory. Touch them even now, Father. Every pastor on the line right now, God. Fill them up in you. Give them a greater glory. A touch from on high. Even now, Father, let them feel your glory like never before. Like never before. Give them a new, uh, give them new oil, God. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Listen, there's some, there's some of you out there probably. Ooh, you're yeah. called, but you don't have the title Jesus. yet. Jesus, come so on receive now. this. You just serve it, Father. As, yes. as 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 a prayer for you. Yes, so my Lord. You're out there right now, and you know yes, you might be serving under a ministry, or you might not be connected. Mm. But receive that prayer for you. Yes, my Lord. Because God gives you the title, not man. Yes, He does. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. You're such a wonderful Savior. Mm. That's why we love you, Lord. You are holy and righteous. You are sovereign. You are a wonderful savior. You are great and greatly do to be praised. You do great things, my Lord. There is no one like you. No one can touch us like you can, Father. Mm, no one loves, loves us like you do. You love us with an unconditional love. And God, you're a God of a second chance. And for that one that may have backslidden, or for that one, Lord God, that may have strayed away from you, Father, I pray even now, Father, even that you would draw them back unto you, Father, like that prodigal son, oh God. Yes, Lord. Draw them back to you, Father, by the power of your spirit, God, move even now. Yes, my Lord. A greater revelation of who you are. Let them leave religion, but Father, may they, may they draw close to you even now, tonight. That tonight be the start of a new beginning new love walk with you, mm. a new love walk with you, Father. Mm, mm, mm. You just simply want us to come to you just as we are because we can't get our, we can't get ourselves together, but you can. Yes, my, thank you for your sweet spirit. Oh, your presence is so strong. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. As your word clearly says, Father, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And his mercy endure forever. For that one that may be seeking you, Father, I pray, Father, even now, that they will begin to draw closer to you. Because everything that they need is in your presence. As your word says, as your word says, there's peace in your presence. Peace can only be found in you. Let the peace of God fall even now in their lives, in their homes, right now. Oh, God, do what only you can do tonight. Oh, the presence of God is so strong. Yeah, I know. And I, it, it's Ooh. interesting because when we start praying and you get in the, in, in the spirit, I'm hearing so much right now. And I'm going to say. Yeah, that, come you know, on now. Glory. You know, if Glory. you're pastoring out there right now. And Thank you, sometimes Jesus. it's so easy to mimic what you see. And I hear the spirit. Uh -huh. saying, Be you. He's trying to do a new thing in the area that you're in. Thank you, Chief. So if you're here, you're listening to us and we're praying. Yes, Lord. Okay, just be you. It's easy to see somebody else and see somebody else's success. But God is saying right now, just be you. Those things that you see is good. something That's new good. in the area that you're in. And so you can copy a Stephen Furtick or Petro Dollar or That's some good. pastors, but God is trying to do something different with you because he's trying to reach somebody and other people that are seeing things. Right now in the body of Christ, and I'll say to Stacey, you'll see, uh, it's, especially as younger generation, they don't play games. <laughs> They're mm -hmm. looking for something more real. Come on now, that's it, that's so it. 
You don't have to have all the things you think you need to have to pass right. somebody. So let God use you and just step out on faith. And when you step and you're moving forward, you'll begin to start seeing him show up in these particular areas of your life and in your ministry. So some of you are going through a transition period. You just don't realize that. So it's mm -hmm. time for you to that's do, a word. It's just time for you to do something different. That's a good word. Wow. Try to show you, you know, that's, that's pretty much what, what God did in my life back then, as you were talking earlier about me, when I walked away from the number one song, you know, you know, God will require us to step out of our comfort zone, you know? Um, like I said, I, I didn't have a clue what was going to happen to me because I was just so used to living a certain lifestyle and, um, knowing that once I made that decision to walk away from the R&B industry, I didn't, you know, I really didn't know what, what was going to happen. You know, I just simply had to trust God, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, God pro, pro proven to me throughout the 29, 28 years that he is my Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides, you know? And um, so following God sometimes is, is there are going to be seasons in your life when you, you can't trace the hand of God, but you have to trace the heart of God. Hey man, that's good, Stacey. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And then, you know, um, you mentioned Kevin. And how divine that meeting, you know, I know that that story, but <laughs> talk about how God hooked you guys up. <laughs> well, actually, um, okay, long story short, my father um, was my co-manager at the time. And Kevin, he hired Kevin to do the audio for me. Mm -hmm. And um, back then I was on tour and um, I was dating Oh, I don't want to get all into this. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't, go there, don't go there. <laughs> the truth of the matter, we were, seeing, we were seeing other people, okay? Uh -huh. And um, so he asked me out, and I told him no, because mm -hmm. he worked for me. And he asked me out again, and I said no. So he asked me a third time. And we actually dated for 11 straight days. And so, yeah, um, that's how that began. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, he worked for me and then I just didn't think it was a good idea for me to date my sound engineer. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, he proposed to me six months later and we've been married for 28, 29 years. Yeah, that's good, that's good man. I love, I, love that, I love the story. You guys kind of hung out, became friends. And then, you know, Kevin wasn't messing around. He knew what he, he knew what God called him to. <laughs> he knew it. He knew it. Uh, and, and you know what, Stacey, um, stepping out, when you step out, you wrote a book. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that last, but we're here because the book mm -hmm. kind of speaks to some of this stuff. Yes, it does. Um, and it kind of just, and y'all need to get the book. I know you don't have it near you anymore, but give the, give the book a little bit. Talk about a little you bit about what? it. I should have grabbed the book earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Nah, I don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we can, yeah, well, <laughs> long story short, the book is entitled, God, God put it on my heart to write this book um, seven years ago. And I actually was pro pro procrastinating because I, I don't know, I, I just kept saying, I don't even know where to begin. But I just felt that God was pulling at my heartstrings to pick up the pen and just start writing. And that's what I did. So um, it's not a very, you know, it's, it's a short read, but it's, it's, it's a lot of things that I went through. In the music industry and it talks about love it talks about um the power of forgiveness um which i'm very big on the importance of forgiving people which you know people, i don't think people quite realize the importance of forgiveness you know it's important more more so for you to forgive than the other person yeah there you um, go. forgiveness when, when when we as people don't forgive we block our blessings Mm -hmm. because what does what does god do god forgives us each and every time we sin no it doesn't give us the great he, that doesn't give us a license to sin right, right? right people talk a lot a lot about grace now grace is and this is the way i look at grace grace is god enabling us to do something that we can't do ourselves i'm, I'm gonna use this prime example okay now for me i used to bite my fingernails really really bad right mm -hmm. And I used to bite my fingernails so bad where they would, they would literally bleed. Um, 
And I used to pray so much about that habit. And I asked God, I said, God, would you please help me to stop biting my fingernails? And I don't even know when, don't have a clue, but I stopped biting my fingernails. And that was the grace of God, enabling me to do something that I could not do on my own. Okay. So I believe that God doesn't look at the length of the prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of God. He looks at the sincerity of the prayer. So if something, if it's something in your life, if it's a bad habit or whatever it may be, ask God to give you the grace to do it. The grace of God will enable you to, to stop doing that thing. Amen. Amen? So, yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting you said that because at 1208 a.m., I went live. You know, I was messing around with the mic. And mm -hmm. I, I was talking about us being on tonight, you know, so you guys want to tune in. I said, I had a word, so I'm going to share it. I shared mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. And, mm -hmm. and Paul, the Apostle Paul says, uh, everything I do, I am what I am by the grace of God. Yes. Ah, but it's the grace. And then yes. I said, but then he said, I've worked more than the other apostle, but I did it through grace. So he kind of sandwiched his work, his efforts through grace, because he knew I couldn't do, I had to do something. Yeah. But it was grace that enabled me to do it. That's so, it. That's we, it. We knew this was God in, in this whole thing. We knew Absolutely. It. <laughs> you know, and I always say, I truly believe the timing of God is impeccable. You know, right. God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not so much higher than our thoughts. So I just believe that God strategically orchestrates things. And, and when he does it, you know, it's him, you, mm -hmm. you know, you just know it's him. But, you know, getting back to the music industry and how I, you know, walked away from it. It was not easy for me, but I knew God was calling me and I said, yes. So my yes to God was, you know, I actually believe that that's what God is looking for from all of us. Mm -hmm. It's yes, God, to your will. Right. Yes, God, to your way. Whatever you want me to do, I make myself available for your use. Right. That's the heart of a servant. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And, and I actually, I said it was a grace on you to walk away. Because, you know, to be able to buy what you want and to go anywhere you want and do things. Some people just, that's, you know, I had talked to one entertainer that came to our church and he was preaching and he said some of the other uh, entertainers in the business got born again. They were saved and they really wanted to live for Christ. They wanted to do something different. But um, a couple of them told me, said, I, I don't know how to eat. I need to eat. And this is the way I eat. And they didn't know how to walk away. And so I think people like yourself, other men and women of God can, now again, now if you're in the music business and God's using you in that, that's your thing. Okay, do it, do, we're not saying the music business is bad. That's not what we're saying. Um, but you wanna follow the, the voice of the Holy Spirit because there's something much bigger and better. That's the key follow. right there. That's yeah. the key, mm -hmm. that's the key. You know, and I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, throw any names out there, but um, I did a show with um, a female recording artist a while ago. And um, she and I were talking backstage and she was sharing with me how she was still singing R&B and gospel. And um, she says, well, I love the Lord and I, I believe he loves me. And um, I'm, I'm going to continue to sing R&B and gospel. But for me, you know, God took the desire away. And it's something I can't even... I really can't even describe, but that's what he did. So honestly speaking, I can't even remember the words to some of my songs. Mm. And um, I just, I just simply don't want to sing them anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't knock, I don't knock anyone that professes to be a Christian that sings R&B music because I feel like everybody's walk with God is, is different. Amen. Right, right. I don't judge anyone, you know, mm -hmm. I just know for me, it was no longer for me. And, and, and especially when it came to the lack of integrity, the lack of character, I had to begin to dress more provocatively. I had to begin to go to after parties where they, you know, got high and they, you know, they had these things where, you know, this stuff that I was not trying to, you know, get involved in. You know, and, and and I said, well, if this is what it takes, you know, to further my career, you know, then you guys can have it. And that's what I did. I walked away. I'm not going to those same sex uh, party and they, they call them swingers. 
that's what the parties are called, you know. And this one particular person said to me many years ago, Stacey, you don't go to enough parties. You need to come to these parties and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, no, you go ahead. That's not me. So, yeah, I had to I had to start dressing more provocatively. And, and that's when I just, like I said, I, I left it all behind. Mm-hmm. I left it all. And if I had to make the decision to do it again, I would, I would, I would. My, my decision would be the same. I don't feel like I, I don't feel like I, honestly, I'm, I'm not, I'm not missing out on anything. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I really am not. God has been good to me. Yeah, he has yeah. even blessed me with some things that I didn't even ask for, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I don't miss any of the traveling. I don't miss any of the R&B singing. I don't miss any of it. Now, when it comes to the things of God, I I love so much Mm. seeing God change people's lives. You know, when you pick up that microphone and you begin to sing or or you begin to speak and you see God setting somebody free, that does it for me. Right, right. That does it. You know, there's, uh, you probably can attest to this because you minister as well. when you step up, it's like, uh, it's almost, I, I have a hard time explaining what it is. It's like, I'm watching myself, you know? It's like, I know what God has told me to say. Then when you get up yeah. and flowing, it's like, oh my God. It's like, I don't, I can't explain the feeling you have, but exactly. you, you know, it's a different kind of high, I guess. I, I don't yeah, know. It's, it weird to say it. it's, just, it's like, God, man, this is, I like, I feel like I'm in a zone. I'm not sure I'm explaining. Yeah, I don't have the words. I totally came, I can yeah. totally relate. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, and so how can you walk away from something like that? You Come know? on now. It's, yeah. You can't put a price on it. And then and it lets you know that it's not you. It lets you know it's God mm-hmm. working through you. Mm-hmm. We're just the vessels that God uses. Yep. It's not about us. And I, I, I truly believe that the more we yield to God, the more he can use us. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. And when you see somebody uh, set free or somebody come to you and say, oh, my God. They're really I- blessed. Yeah. yeah. Or oh, something else. Say I said. I'm like I don't remember saying that because what I was talking about teaching with this. But then the Holy Ghost gave me for him to say something through what you were saying. Uh, I was talking to some friends about that the other night. Oh wow! Did I lose her? We lost her. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now I'm by myself. <laughs> Let's wait for her to come back. Okay, for those who are just joining us on this live, man, is we're here talking um, to Stacy Lattisaw Jackson, and um, she was has joined me here tonight. And you know, even though I say it's a conversation at the wall, that's what we called it. You know, one of the things I pray is that God, you be led of what we we talk about, what we do. And if you joined us and we were in the middle of prayer, um, she said, I just, she said she wanted to pray, you know, for people that were going through depression and going through some of the things, um, that she had gone through and as she started praying and it just led and we just prayed for people and we prayed for pastors. So, um, and I thought to say anything, you know, you may have a thing that you do in a plan and something set aside that you're going to do, but let this, what we're doing tonight be an example of how to flow with, uh, the Holy spirit because you want him to lead you in all that you do and how you do what you do. And so, um, yeah, as you can see, she loves God and she loves the people of God and she's walked through some things. You know, one of the things that I um, say, especially I was on the radio, I said it a lot, felt led to say it a lot, that um, your misery sometimes can turn out to be your ministry. And um, so when that happens, um, hey, Stacy, you back. <laughs> Are you back. Right. Okay. That's I was I was just talking to the people. Keep I was keeping them keeping them engaged. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look, that was my sister calling my cell phone. Okay. <laughs> I'm on my cell phone. So my sister called my cell phone. I clicked in uh-huh. and it just completely now nah, don't don't worry. Yeah, about messed up my phone. Anyway. You know, one of the things I was saying is I was, I was talking about I was talking about how um you know, we just led in how we're doing this tonight. You know, it's not just a, a interview. It's just kind of, it's ministry, you know? And, and, and so, that's, that's always my prayer, by the way. Yeah, that's me, you know? And so what I said, what I used to say on the radio all the time, which I'm gonna tap that a little bit, um, is that sometimes your misery can turn out to be your ministry. Some of the things that oh, you walk, walk that's through, good. 
turns out to be the thing you minister on. So what happened tonight, as we were praying, it was some things that were a thing in your life that God delivered you from. Now I can walk. Uh -huh. You know, it's interesting. I um, when you look at Exodus, you know, we know the account with Moses. Yes. You know, set. You know, he was the one that led Israel to be free. Mm -hmm. but think about it, man. He he spent the prior forty years before that in the wilderness himself. That's and right. How can you walk people through something you hadn't walked through? Come that's on true. now. That's that. That's that's a word right there. You hear me? And so because guess what? You can't really effectively pray. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry. Speak or or minister in that area sometimes mm -hmm. until you've gone through it yourself, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if I don't have a testimony what can I share? Right, right. So I had so, to go through that that season. I, I call it a season of fire because mm -hmm. it was, that's what it felt like for me, that depression felt like fire mm -hmm. um, because it just seemed like it, it was, it, it just was like never going to end mm -hmm. until I became fully committed to serving God. Right. And that's when, like I said, my life began to change. And I, I always say this, and I said it earlier, I just believe that God is looking for our yes. When we give him our yes, make ourselves available for his use, mm -hmm. that's when God can do his greatest works through us. Amen. You know, you came and you uh you helped me out. You was working with me on the radio for a little bit, man. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Amen. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I know you laughed. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed those times by the way. I enjoyed it too, man. You know, it's funny because yeah. well, for those who don't know the story, I had um, invited Stacy to come and be on the radio show. Mm -hmm. So I got a message from her on Facebook. Um, I said, John, call me. And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. so I called. And I didn't first, for the first 10, 15 minutes, I'm like, somebody's playing. This ain't this ain't Stacy calling me. Because <laughs> I just said, okay, really? Because I got friends that play games, you know? So I'm like, oh, really? okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm listening. I'm like, okay, this is really oh, crazy, you know? So you came and you hung out a little bit. And um and you we did some shows and one of our I thought was one of our best shows we did together was that one on relationships remember and we had people call in oh it sure was yeah mm -hmm. and we talked about relationships yep. and and mm -hmm. just how to do the couple okay if you had to talk to somebody about relationships what would you give them right now your best advice off your experience and what God's done through you and Kevin um, what would you tell them what's one what's what's your love language. I would say um, to try and be patient mm -hmm. with one another because um, I believe that we're all a work in progress. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody feels like they've arrived, trust me, you haven't arrived right. because we're still <laughs> all growing and learning and we all are flawed people. That's number two. Mm -hmm. Remember that, right? We're not perfect people. So your mate's going to do things that you don't like and you're going to do things that they don't like, right? right? And I would say thirdly, um, the importance of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, forgiveness. Forgiveness is, is, is the key. It means a lot to God. And it's more so important for you, like I said earlier. Importance, you know, forgiveness is, is, is just something that we were called to do, whether you want to forgive or not. Mm -hmm. You know, God forgives us every day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, I, I'm gonna say this, Stacey, you probably, I know you're gonna agree with this. You know, it's one that you can find out how, like me, I said, like patience. I, I'm patient, I'm patient with everybody, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm patient. Then I got married and I found mm -hmm. out how patient I was not. <laughs> <laughs> I figured out, I was like, oh my God, cause your spouse will expose things in you that you didn't know. You're like, okay, wow, okay. Hey, that's funny. Man, I gotta work on this. Cause, cause you know, oh, when you single, goodness. you know, you just you, you know? But now you know what? Funny. Go ahead. You are so right. Let me share something with you. And in fact, I think I, I, I do believe I shared this on your your show, your radio show, a while ago. Now, this is when Kevin and I first got married, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there were two things that used to irk me so much. And I just got to the point where I said, you know what? Just forget it. I know how to solve this. So it was the one thing was this one. He used to leave that toilet seat up, right? Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Now, you know when you got to use the bathroom at night, right? Mm -hmm. And being a woman, we go in there, we, you know, do what you got to do. I used to fall in the toilet, right? <laughs> I was just being transparent right now. Uh, right? The so, yeah, absolutely. that's the key, being transparent. There's no use to trying to cover anything up. So, uh -huh. yeah. So, I used to fuss so much with him about 
Just put the toilet seat down. It only takes a couple seconds, man. Really? Put it, just put it back down so I can, you know, do what I need to do in the bathroom too. So I said, I'm gonna solve that. I'm gonna just start using another bathroom. Uh, <laughs> so that's did, what I did. did, did so go- anyway, the second thing was you now this this I think every everybody may not look at it the same way, but anyway, yeah, the toothpaste, right? Mm-hmm. We used to share. The toothpaste. So I, uh, it always annoyed me when he would push the toothpaste from the middle. Mm. Why not just push the toothpaste from the bottom, dude? You know, <laughs> you know you what? what I'm okay, yeah. I'm, gonna throw, I'm gonna throw something at you, okay? That was to earth the heck out of me. So I solved that by buying my own toothpaste. See, but see, there's there's answers, and see that, and that's I need for toothbrush. I mean, I meant toothpaste. Yeah, toothpaste. I'm sorry, y'all. It's been a long day. I've been at the car dealership all day, so I'm sorry. But yeah, I meant toothpaste. Mm-hmm. Um, I started buying my own toothpaste. So I, yeah, so that that solved that problem. But we're all flawed people. Right. If if you think that your spouse or you are perfect, nobody's perfect. You're gonna always have problems and issues. And um, I just believe that it's important to come to God every day as we are and ask us, ask God to make us and mold us and shape us into who he's called us to be. That's one of my daily prayers I say every day is to God. Right. And and here's the thing. We're all here to serve. And so and Amen. Serving, and serving my wife, Lord, show me how to serve her. And then she serves me. Yes. You said it, you hit the nail on the head. You don't always have something. But as you oh, grow yeah. Especially when you're first married, the things we look back on now, um, it's not, it's like, oh my God, we argued about that or we didn't like that or something was petty. You know what I mean? That this petty mm-hmm. now, but back then it's huge. And I get it for you younger couples, it's huge. But trust it's me, so if your true. heart is, I want to serve that person. Um, and then really look at it, am I fighting to be right or I'm fighting for us to be right? You know, sometimes people want to win arguments. It's not about winning an argument. No, it's, it's not. not. You know, okay, we got two differences no, here. How, like you said, okay, the answer for you was, I'm just gonna get my own toothpaste. That's simple. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people feel like, nah, 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 we gonna, he gonna change or she gonna change. Can't do that, you know? Let me tell you something. <laughs> this is one thing I learned a long time ago. You can't change your mate. And, and number two, mm-hmm. don't ever think that your mate is gonna make you happy all the time. God is the only one, in my opinion. This is my this is my opinion. Nah, you, you know no, you hear that's right. I'm telling you, you know, mm-hmm. true. How ha- you can really, how do I put this without? I'm, I don't want to sound like no no kind of way. Um, where's that scripture where it says put no confidence in man? Mm-hmm. Okay, now of course Kevin is the head of, of the household, right? Mm-hmm. But ultimately, I serve God. God's first. Then I think in many cases we get it out of out of out of order. Mm-hmm. The order is God first, Kevin second, kids mm-hmm. third. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now with a lot of couples, I put the presence of God, with a lot of people, they have the order mixed up. The woman is not supposed to be first, honey. You're not. Mm-hmm. You are not first, meaning you're not supposed to tell your spouse what to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let him be the man of the house. Let him wear the pants. Mm-hmm. That's not your role. We have to stay in our own lanes. Come on now. Yeah. Would you agree, sir? Yeah. 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 And, and, and here's what I'll say. I say this when I'm, I'm doing premarital counseling. I said, you know, mm-hmm. we got to stay in our lanes. Husband is anointed. Wife is anointed. Everybody has their place. Like when I first got married, some people mm-hmm. would look at a man is supposed to know how to do everything around the house. I grew up in an apartment, so I didn't know how right. to do certain things like mow the lawn. I tried to work mm-hmm. that lawn more. I didn't know how to turn That's it on. I thought I was doing it. My wife came out and helped me. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we'll look at things on television that tells mm-hmm. us here's how it's supposed to be, but go back to what God says in the order God said it in. And That's of course, set. it's going to go against your flesh. But remember, the flesh is That's enmity right. or enemy to, to how God does things and to God. So you, you're That's right. You, so Stacey, I'm not gonna keep you long because I because we done prayed, we done done a whole lot of things. Okay, so I what's going on with you now? Because I one, I love the fact that you're singing with Kayla. I saw Kayla's your daughter singing, mm-hmm. yeah, and you are grandma now. Ain't that wonderful? Oh my 
goodness, I am so in love with this little boy. <laughs> and yeah, he has changed my entire world. I love him so much. He's just brought so much joy in our home. Um, it's it's beautiful being a grandmom. Mm -hmm. I call myself Nana, but I don't call her grandma, you know. Yeah. Some people be saying grandma and all that stuff. Mm. Whatever you want to do, but I don't have a problem with it. But uh, yeah, so Kayla is stepping out of her comfort zone. She's singing more. Mm -hmm. um, she sounds just like me. Uh, she plays the piano. She writes songs as well. And of course, you know, my son, he he sings as well, but he doesn't really want to sing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he um, is more so of a writer, producer, and he's an audio engineer. He works for our company, Audio Assurance, which in fact, um we've been up and going for what 13 years we assist churches with their sound systems we yeah, but, do it go, go give that plug i meant to say oh, that oh yes that indeed. Plug. please please well, come please. on now yes uh -huh. indeed god has blessed audio assurance if you need if you pastor if you're online mm -hmm. and you need help with your system you may want to give us a call okay yes. god has blessed our company but the the, the blessing is we are a blessing to the kingdom Amen. So what we do is, uh, for instance, there have been a lot of churches that have switched over to, um, you know, having church online, right? Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is they're trying to uh, enhance their sound systems. So we uh, help with that. We do um, speakers. We even uh, train the uh, what did the, the volunteers, the Sunday service um, people that volunteer. Yeah, we train them as well. We do, um, like I said, the installations. We 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 do it all. Mm -hmm. Video yep. as well. What's the website? So we're currently staffing. We have thirty-two churches that we um, yes are around working the, for. around the DMV. In Rowland, yes, Rowland, Virginia, and DC. Mm -hmm. right, give the website, Stacy, yep. for that, so people can. The website is audioassurance.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Guys. Yep. Check it out. They got, they got, they do a wonderful job. Yes, they yeah. Do. And they have we're, some. We're over at Ray Temple, yes. uh, Gaithers. We do a uh, Church of the Redeemer in Gaithersburg. Mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, what is the First Baptist Glen Arden, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So God has really blessed the business, but it's all about the king. We we we're doing kingdom work. Right. Enhancing the 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 sound systems for the churches. Okay, and well, also the recording studio, um, Ninth Light Recording right. Studios. We've been around, well, actually, Kevin started that like 35 years ago, mm -hmm. and that's located in Fort Washington, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so if you're looking to do some recording, whether it's a demo or something, any of the you know, anything like that, um, the number there is 567 8200, I believe, for that number. I'm sorry. Uh, studio number is 301-567-3483, extension 1. I'm going to repeat that again. 301-567-3483, extension 1 for Night Flight Recording Studio. And the telephone number for audio assurance is 301-567-8200. And I believe that's the extension 1 as well. So you can also, um, if you want to book a session, you can go to nightflightrecordingstudios.com to book a session there okay and uh what you got going on oh my gosh a whole lot <laughs> <laughs> i actually took a break because of the you know the covid situation mm -hmm. i had been uh working with children ages 9 through 18 that i, I love so much working with kids mm -hmm. um it's so much easier sometimes working with kids and adults <laughs> i don't mean yeah. to sell me or anything but yeah sometimes it is um, so yeah, I, I teach vocal lessons. Mm -hmm. I am also a mentor and, um, what else that I've been doing, uh, prior to COVID, of course, the women's ministry, women walking with authority. Mm -hmm. Um, we have been meeting once a month on a Tuesday mm -hmm. and, um, it's called safe Haven women's mm -hmm. fellowship. Uh, also, what have I been doing? I, I had started working on some new gospel material. I took a break, but um, in fact, I was just talking to Kevin the other day. We have a studio in our basement, in our home. So yeah, um, I need to get back into those songs because God has given me some prophetic songs mm -hmm. and uh, Kayla and I will be singing together on some of these songs, Lord willing. 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been doing those things along with babysitting that I, I really, really love. Right. And by the way, the second baby is due in November. Right, that's baby, right. Baby Chloe. On your birthday? Well, <laughs> uh, well whatever God sees fit. No, but I the due date, due date is November 15th. Okay. My birthday is the 25th. So right. yeah, we'll see. Right. Amen. Well, baby ladies- Chloe. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to keep Stacey. You had a long day. And oh, I'm- my gosh. That's why I'm talking so backwards. Look, I, like I said, we've been we've been at the dealership for like five hours today. It's been a long day out, out in that hot sun. Um, my son bought a beautiful car today. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, look, I go to bed early. I don't know about <laughs> you, my friend. And but I'm only in the bed by nine nine thirty. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a night owl. I'm a night owl. I just I really? Up, yeah, Stacey, yeah, I, I stay up wow. late. I'm always got something on my head trying to do something. Okay. But, but look, I appreciate it, man. Um, we gotta do this again. Amen. Just, you know, Absolutely. Uh, and I love this ministry part. So you know, we gotta think about what we can do something ministry wise. Absolutely. Stuff on the guess what? It is needed more so now than ever before. Yeah. There are a lot of people that are hurting. There are a lot of people that are suffering silently. Um, there are a lot of people walking in fear right now, you know, fear of the unknown. You know, even with the um, the new variants they're talking yeah. about in the news. Yeah. And I did want to tap into that a little bit. You know, God is not giving us a spirit of fear, right. but of power and love and a sound mind. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what he said in his word. Don't be afraid. You walk by faith and do God. And, and we're not mm-hmm. telling you to listen, you know, vaccine, mask, whatever. Just do what Lord tells you to do. We know Amen. we got all these debates out here. People arguing. Oh my so, gosh. So don't, don't even talk about it. I know. So listen, you guys I don't do even that. get involved with that stuff. Yeah. I'll leave it alone. To be honest yeah. with you. I, I don't even like talking about it at all. You know, I know, I know. It just gets crazy. So just you be letting I just know for me, I wear my mask. I don't care if I'm at the gas station. I don't care if I'm in the bank. If I'm, it doesn't matter. I am keeping a mask on. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling anyone what to do, but that's just what 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 we're doing. We're keeping our mask on. Mm-hmm. So, yes, indeed. No fear. All right, Stacey, any last words? My friend, you want to shout out and say to anybody or anything you want to give me a word? Uh, any last words? Um, Stay faithful. Stay true to God. Keep your eyes fixed on the Lord and not what's going on in the world. Amen. Amen. Because as God says in his word, um, all things work together for good to them to love the Lord. And those who are called according to his purpose. We may not understand what God is doing, but God is God is at work. And God is still working miracles in and through his people. God is still on the throne. Don't walk in fear. Keep your eyes fixed on him. Amen. And um, I would say also pray more. Get to know who God is. Mm-hmm. Spend more time in your word. Amen. Amen. The Bible also says they that wait upon the Lord serve you their strength. So if there, if there could be some of, you, some of you out there that's waiting on God um, to manifest some things in your life, some things that you've prayed about, so, but God, you, you could be in a waiting season right now. And during this waiting season, pray more, see God, seek the face of God more. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Stacey Lattisar Jackson, I so appreciate you. Being- Amen. Appreciate you as well. Yeah. So absolutely. You have a good night. Hug Kevin and family for me. I Amen. He, he, I've taken up some of his time. So tell him I appreciate it. Oh, it's all it. good. He's on the phone with one of his buddies talking about cars. So, oh my gosh. I told you we was at the car dealership all day. So we saw some nice cars. But yeah, I like cars, but I, I'm not into them like that. <laughs> I guess it's a band thing. It I don't is. know. I love cars. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Okay. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Stacy. All right. God bless you, John. All right. All right. Take care now. All right. You too.